Indian Supreme Court slams Hindu Party spokeswoman for insulting Islam. So, on July 1st, Nupur Sharma, the suspended BJP spokesperson, was sharply criticized by the Supreme Court of India for her controversial remarks on the Prophet Muhammad that sparked international outrage and domestic violence. Or, I should not like... Anyways, uh, the court refused to accept Sharma's plea to consolidate all the different police reports, or FIRs, lodged against her for hurting religious sentiments filed across numerous states in India. According to the Supreme Court, Nupur Sharma is quote-unquote single-handedly responsible for exacerbating tensions between Hindus and Muslims in India, and even for the murder of a Hindu tailor who was beheaded by Islamists for showing support to Sharma. Justice Surya Kant lambasted Sharma for her perceived arrogance, stating, "What if she is the what? What if she's the spokesperson of a party? She thinks she has a backup power and can make any statement without respect to law of the land." When Sharma's lawyer said that she had apologized for her remarks and retracted the statements, the court replied that she should have gone on TV and begged the nation to be forgiven. These statements by the Supreme Court were harshly criticized by many. Some even said that the court was following Islamic Sharia law. Uh, first of all, single-handedly, she's single-handedly responsible for the, like, does the court, excuse me, does single-handedly, does it not mean, like, she's responsible and no one else? Is that not what single-handedly means? Like, or am I misunderstanding? Yeah. Okay. So if the court is saying that she is single-handedly responsible, does that mean that the people that have actually committed the violence and the murder, that they are not responsible at all? Isn't that what the exactly. implications are? In fact, it's even worse than that, Armin. It's worse than that. It's validating the people who became violent and did violent things to other citizens mm -hmm. because of her statements. They're actively this, validating, like, the hey, extrajudicial so, violence. Because so they're arrest. attributing the responsibility to her. The, this Wait. is why I titled this segment, The Supreme Court of India is Wrong About New Sharma." Wait, like, okay, so if you arrest the people that actually committed murder, can't they just say, like, hey, the Supreme Court said that is her. <laughs> she is the one that is responsible. Single-handedly. That means I'm off the hooks. That's what the, the highest court in the land says that it was all her. What the hell is happening? This is the Supreme Court. I thought the India Supreme Court was smarter than this. I don't understand how this, how this works. So, by the way, by the way, what is like? Why do you have your Supreme Court just coming out and making like moral statements? Aren't they just supposed to uphold the law? Like, are they like what is this? Like, are they like your? Is this the Supreme Court or the Supreme like? I don't know. Like the moral judgment passing institution i don't know what is this like what is this like they can't <laughs> okay so to be clear these are not contained within orders from the court regarding this matter okay this is what the justices the two justices on the bench said about her during the proceedings and actually some messed up stuff happened during these proceedings which um Forever Stormy is pointing out. So the context of why she was there in front of the Supreme Courts is as follows. Basically, there have been FIRs or police reports, for those who don't know what an FIR is, filed against her for hurting religious sentiments across probably every state in the Union of India. <laughs> like, it's probably every state at this point. And so her lawyer was petitioning the court to say, okay, can we combine all of these? My understanding is, okay, I've let me be clear. This is my understanding of the proceedings. I could be wrong. But she was asking, can we combine all these cases into one case and then just deal with that case since they all belong to or are related to the same alleged quote unquote crime? And the court basically, were, they were so pissed off at her. They were so mad at her because you can read basically what they were saying that they just refused to let her do this. And this is actually a huge problem legally because this is a problem of double jeopardy. You can't be tried multiple times for the same crime like a kangaroo court. And so what Forever Stormy is pointing out was, and the Supreme Court was wrong to not let her combine the FIRs. The court has now made police harassment legal. So this is setting actually a really dangerous precedent. Mm. Um, by the way, I don't understand how things work in India. Okay. But 
I, I don't think, am I wrong to think like she, she did what she did? Like, even if you're, I mean, we were criticizing her, okay? Because as a, maybe in her position, she shouldn't have said that, even though what she, everything she said is true. But I think like the worst, the worst that should happen to her is like being let go of her position as the BGSP spokesperson, okay? I don't think anything she did was a crime. Do you think anything she did was a crime? I think like she Absolutely should just be. Absolutely not. I think Absolutely like not. I think yeah I think it was a poor decision and the punishment should have been like you're fired that's it okay I don't and she was <laughs> and she was that's it that's it that's go home everybody she said something that she shouldn't have said as a spokesperson I fired her done why is this a crime nothing that nothing she has done should be a crime anywhere on the planet it's unbelievable that India a secular democracy you could have the Supreme Court coming at you because of expressing an opinion. Does it make sense? No, I don't think so. But here's the thing, she wasn't even expressing an opinion. She was just stating what is in Islamic scripture. I, she was yeah, just true. stating facts. You know what? I think, I think the Supreme Court of India is going for Islam, okay? They are trying to make Islam illegal. This is this, this is, I think this is, they have it, in, I think they're working with each other, okay? This is all just a trick, okay? Nupur Sharma and the Supreme Court of India, they're like, I will be the victim, come at me, set up the standard for what's illegal to say, I will say something that is true within Islam, you tell, you tell everybody it's illegal, everybody claps, and then like, based on this standard, now the Quran and the Hadith, it's illegal, checkmate Islam, we got rid of it. Islam, India is free of Islam right now. I think because this is, if this is illegal, then reading the hadith should be illegal. The hadith itself says the things that New Sharma says. Does it not? It, that, it's, uh, it is my understanding that, that it certainly does. So let me clarify something. Forever Stormy yeah. is saying she technically broke the law since India has blasphemy laws. The right course is for the supreme court to strike down those laws but they will never do this because that will piss off the government so when armin and i that, are saying that what she did was not criminal we're saying no what i didn't say did that should no I we, we were just saying we were I like shouldn't I, be. I think i was careful it shouldn't what well whatever we said we we're like it's i i believe i just said what she did was not criminal technically okay. it is against the penal code of india okay in okay. in a reasonable society this should right. not be criminal is what i'm trying to say i know that technically it is but it yeah. shouldn't be i blasphemy is it, not a crime at large no i was careful i i didn't say what she did is i think i said uh, what she did was uh, not against the law because it is against the law. I said it shouldn't be against the law. I think I was careful to say it that way. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Okay. By the way, how do you like how do you like this Hindus? This is about this is blasphemy laws. Okay. You were a lot of Hindus were like clapping for blasphemy laws when they were being used against me and Susie. Okay. Mm. Now these are the same blasphemy laws that we are endorsing. If you want to endorse that, you have to endorse this. Okay, you should be like, yeah, lock her away. FIRs all, have as plenty of, like, as many FIRs as you want, okay? If you endorse all these FIRs being filed against me and Susie, but now you're saying this is unfair, you're a goddamn hypocrite, okay? This is what blasphemy law gets you. You can't speak, okay? You cannot say, to give your, you cannot express your ideas. You can't even state facts, okay? Because blasphemy laws will come for you. And the Supreme Court agrees with us. How is this India? How is this a secular democracy? I mean, look, come on, guys. Fix your country. <laughs> <laughs> he yells at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wanted to... Wait, 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 wait. One second. One more thing. One more thing. Isn't the Supreme Court... Like, the way... The reason why we criticize Nupur Sharma, okay... Our pro like everybody like oh my god you're insulting Islam, <laughs> who cares? Okay, our problem with Nupur Sharma was not the fact that she was like offending Muslims and stuff. You know, in fact, do that as much as you want. Our problem was that as a politician, I don't even know if that position makes it a politician or not, but potentially as a politician, she should not be expressing opinions about maybe if in her capacity. As a politician, she should stay away talking about religion. Maybe she's like, on her private time, you know, she should, you know, again, that's not illegal. It's just not advised, I think, okay? Um, however, 
what Nupur Sharma did, and I, me and Susanna criticize, the Supreme Court is doing that a hundred times more. Like the Supreme Court is like, oh, these are religious things and you shouldn't have a comment about it. Like they are, like you have a government entity talking about what people should and shouldn't say relig religious wise. So, you know, so what the action, like in this manner, the actions of the Supreme Court is a lot more a violation of secularism than what Sudhno Prashama did. We don't even know if technically, because the BJP people say it's a private organization, so her position as a spokesperson doesn't make her a politician, not paid by a taxpayer. I don't know how that works, okay? But it's iffy, okay? It's questionable. But the Supreme Court, if, if what, basically this is what I'm saying. If what New Prashama uh, did was wrong, then by the same standard, the Supreme Court is a thousand times more wrong, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think in many ways what the Supreme Court said regarding her has way more weight than like her insulting, quote unquote, insulting comments. Because the, the, they can be like, she can be dismissed, you know, as, oh, the party wants to turn their back on her and suddenly say that she's a fringe element where it's like, sure. Um, they've been carefully mentoring her for like 10 years. Um, this is not the Supreme this, Court. This is this actually is... like the, the, the highest court in the land. To me, the opinions that they're putting forth, even if it's not like a part of the order, like is has so much more gravity to it. Um, but I wanted to read a little bit from this Wait, article. New I think you should rename the Supreme Court as the Fifi Police. Okay, so you're not the Supreme Court, <laughs> you're the Fifi Police. Okay, people's Fifis are hurt. Quick, quick. Send out the ambulances. People are hurt. People's ambulances. Send out the ambulances. Buy some ambulances for the Supreme Court so it could protect people's fifis when they're hurt in India. Oh, my feelings are hurt. Don't worry. The Supreme Court is in the case. He's gonna, they're going to protect you. They're going to protect your fifis. Show the Supreme Court where it's hurt. They're going to kiss it for you. I'm going to it all feel better. It's going to go. All the bad feelings are going to go away. Okay? How's that? Okay? <laughs> Um, I wanted to read this little excerpt from a piece from News Laundry that really detailed why the Supreme Court is so wrong. So this was written by Anand Vardhan for News Laundry. I'm, I love News Laundry, by the way, guys. Really great journalism. Um, so they say, so here they're talking about like why the Supreme Court's comments are dangerous. Quote, first, there is a clear danger in the skewed causality that the court used in observing that Sharma's offensive remarks against Prophet Muhammad were, quote unquote, single handedly responsible for what is happening in the country. This could be seen as judicial approval for uh, blaming her comments for the violent protests and arson, and more recently, the gruesome murder of a Hindu tailor in Udaipur for allegedly supporting her remarks. Moreover, she has been receiving death threats with even calls made for her beheading. Heading. Given this backdrop, the court's remarks could easily be seen as reinforcing the case for the radical impulse, the threat of violence in the gory evidence of actual violence as a response against the offensive comments made in a TV studio. It's hard to find which form of modern jurisprudence treats verbal excess amounting to religious hurt as a valid ground for perpetuation of violence, arson, and calls for beheading. By this line of reasoning, if the French teacher Samuel Paty and the slain Charlie Hebdo journalists were alive today, could they be held single-handedly responsible for all forms of possible violent acts done to protest against them and their suspected supporters? I thought that was an excellent point. Like, so if like Samuel Paty, who was beheaded, you know, for show, quote, allegedly showing the Prophet Muhammad to his students in a classroom. So if then if if he survived, if he didn't die, if he wasn't murdered for this quote unquote blasphemy, and then there were people protesting him and they did lit something on fire, is he responsible for that? Of course not. It's absurd. You don't even have to go there. Based on this standard, he's responsible for his own beheading. He beheaded himself. True. Um, so I want to read just a little bit more. Um, 
the highly problematic cause and effects premise of the court's remark neither aligns with reasonable causality nor proportionality. Instead of being a deterrent against violent response to religious hurt, the remarks unwittingly validate it. In doing so, it could end up playing an unintended part in emboldening violent responses to a range of possible hurt to religious beliefs. And then here's, here's what really gets me. This writer makes such a good point. Second, the court's observations apply in uneven application of the idea of context in judging extreme response. The petitioner had sought to explain her offensive comments as an angry reaction to her deity being insulted by the other panelists in a TV debate. While the court wasn't inclined to consider this as an explanation for her offense, it somehow saw the violent protests in the Uderpo killing in the context of the religious hurt caused by the comments made in a TV studio. If one considers that recourse to content context can be a contentious ground to explain offense, its inconsistent use makes it more problematic. The court's remarks gave an impression that the context of religious hurt sentiments was acceptable as grounds for physical violence, but the hurt religious sentiment couldn't be the context for the offensive remark made in reaction. This ends up giving precedence to one context or over the other. So they're saying, okay, even if you do take the, your, your, your reasoning about who's responsible, if, even if we do accept that, even if that's the case, you're applying it unevenly. You have double standards. Because if, if Nupur Sharma is single-handedly responsible for the violence and international outrage, then what about the person who made her upset about the comments about the Shiva Ling? They're and then she reacted. Isn't, isn't to... that person, isn't that person who made the comments that made her react with her anger as responsible themselves? Or are yeah, they responsible for her right. anger? You're but right. This is that's Hindu... not the case. Guys, it's Hindu... the standard. Yeah, this is devil standard against Hinduism. See, like me and Susie are being unbiased here, okay? This is more, but, you know, in endorsing but hurt feelings uh, from Muslims, but not from Hindus. Like, what the hell is happening here? Like, like if if she's single-handedly responsible, then she's not responsible because she was also responding to her religious sentiments being insulted. So she had, if the people who committed murder had no choice because, hey, it was Nupur Sharma who just incited like their feelings, well, her feelings were also incited by somebody else who was <laughs> who was criticizing Hinduism. So she's not responsible. And probably they were also, <laughs> so they could also come and like, hey, no, we were, somebody was insulting us, so we were upset, so we're not responsible. And then they could also go, just go find the first person. <laughs> then they, all the crimes when in India will be like, just pin it on one person, okay? Like you, it started with you, okay? <laughs> yeah oh my but god I, this... I want i want to make a broader point and this point goes to that this attitude is at the root of all blasphemy laws all aspects of penal code that are work towards enshrining religious belief this is the justification for all of them saying for, in the interest of creating a peaceful society we have to curtail your free expression because if you freely express yourself in regards to this one aspect of life that we are going to enshrine above all others, then people are going to commit violence and basically you're responsible for that violence being done to you. That's why we're going to criminalize it. Like it's, it's, it's a blame the victim mentality and it's it's not actually holding the people who feel compelled to take that violent and criminal action accountable. It's saying, well, they were so outraged because of this one thing that we hold above all others. Yeah. It also gives so much uh, power to violence, okay? You know, like the reason why, like secularists, like we're not... We don't go like, ah, you're violating our secularism and we're so offended. We might go and like, I don't know, do something violent. Okay, we're not going to do that. So nobody's going to appease us. So the more, the crazy, this is how the justice system just tries to appease uh, the craziest and the most violent among you because you're just more, more, they just scare you the most. So you just have to give them what they want, right? So this is like, and if you fall for that, then those, metho those methods uh, work more. So more people are going to be like, hey, we're getting what we want, so how about a little bit more mob justice for everybody so that every 
everybody, the whole system bends the knee to us because they're scared of us, right? Um, anyways, I want to read a few comments before we yeah. move on. Um, yeah, listen. Forever Stormy on Twitch, guys, go follow us on Twitch. Is saying an FIR under blasphemy laws is a badge of honor at this point. I agree, Stormy, which is why I was so happy when I finally got an FIR filed against me. Armin has like six or seven. I was finally included on one of them. Yeah, I want to frame my FIRs and maybe put them in my background. <laughs> Should I do that? I like this. I, I still have FIR. copies of like. Oh, yeah. Well, some of the legal complaints sent to us, that's a non-FIR, but like people would post the FIRs that they filed against you on Twitter, just full of spelling mistakes, like full of the most obvious grammatical <laughs> mistakes ever. How are, India, how are your lawyers so uneducated? Like I would think a, a legal letter written by a lawyer filed against us would have been, you know, it seems like it's done by a sixth grader or something like. Like, I don't, no wonder I don't you're having they, I don't know. I don't know if they even were written by lawyers, to be honest, because it doesn't seem like the, <laughs> the one that we know that was written by a lawyer. That one was horribly like, oh, my God. Anyways, but yeah, yeah, that was Thank insane. You. Um, Yeah, but I would like to, you know, just brag about the fact that this is an honor that, you know, Armin mm. and I both share. I, um, I should hang it. You should like frame it, but then also hang it around, like have a frame hang it around. <laughs> hang it around right, your right. neck. <laughs> yeah. Um. Bengali Hindu is saying blasphemy laws should be scrapped. You know, here at Atheist Republic, even if you are religious, if you're non-religious, if you are right-wing, if you're liberal, if you support Hindutva, if you don't, I think everyone here agrees that the blasphemy laws should be scrapped. It is very rare that even our, like, right-wing Hindutva supporters yeah. support the blasphemy law. Um, support the removal of it, yeah. No, no, I'm saying it's very rare that they do support it here. Yes. Um, and Forever Stormy is saying India's Supreme Court makes the Supreme Court of the United States justices look like a bunch of liberal activists. <laughs> <laughs> True. But I mean, they're def yeah. I don't know. Um, I, I, I'm assuming a lot of um, Hindus are pretty pissed right now in India because of this law, right? right? Like they're accusing. Um, uh, do, do the Supreme Court feel like, uh, uh, does it care? Does it feel pressure? Are they scared? Because people are like really angry, aren't they, in India over this uh, decision? I mean, so the the their court order was like basically just about not letting her combine all the FIRs. Okay, so I don't know how yeah. much of the outrage is about that actual con d decision. No, about the court order. I do the think there are problems with that. There are major no, problems with that. No, but there were, there were like... There were joint letters of over like 150 people, like ex bureaucrats, former like ministers, like former, uh, really you know like high court yeah. lawyers, advocates, who wrote a letter outraged at the Supreme Court, like expressing their discontent. And that there was actually, I think, like some sort of complaint or public interest litigation filed to like rectify their comments against her. I'm just, I'm just, the silver lining to this is that a whole bunch of people that like uh, the, these blasphemy laws, okay, now they're like, wait a second, we don't like these anymore. <laughs> so I'm hoping like we get more Hindus on our side against blasphemy laws because of this. So we'll see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.